Okay, <coughs> so um, welcome again to this uh, large panel now. <laughs> uh, we, uh, we just want to explain a little bit how this whole thing started, what, what the ideas uh, were behind it, and yeah, how it further developed into a, this prototype that you can see here now. Um, so, uh, okay, with, uh, I mean, those of you who uh, were in my lecture this morning uh, have already seen these pictures and the explanation to these pictures. So, um, my experience uh, comes from, from both, from, from two sides. On the one hand, as an organist who loves to perform 16th, 17th century music, and also a um, player who play, like, likes to play <coughs> basso continuo pieces of like the 17th uh, century, eight, yeah, until the early 18th century. And on the other hand, as a composer, so I have had these two sides to approach the problem. And for, for me as a player, I found it always very uh, deplorable that lots of the pieces that were written for me, tone temperament, uh, are very hard to perform nowadays because uh, the standard organs are tu tuned in strange temperaments nowadays. Uh, and even if you have uh, what I finally did, buy one of these organs, the, the, I think they are sound wise extremely convincing, especially in, if you have a reverberant space. But even if you can set them to meet on temperament, you can still play just a fraction of the repertoire because there are no split keys. <coughs> so this was kind of the, my, my my position or my problem. And then I thought it would be fantastic if it would be possible to uh, basically work in the same way the historical tuning systems were evolved, that you have a basic standard tuning system, like this, and then uh, you start, as we can see here, adding uh, more and more keys to, to the already existing keyboard, which uh, has the big advantage that, that you don't have to learn a completely new keyboard, like many other instruments that were developed, they are basically completely new instruments, you can't just play them. <laughs> but even uh, an instrument as complex as uh, the Arche organ, that we, which we've uh, <coughs> been heard before, they actually, have, when you just use, as I said, the first and the second row of keys in the lower man manual, it's basically a simple, simple mean tone temperament uh, keyboard. So <coughs> I very much like this idea of, of this modular idea of how old uh, keyboards were designed to, to uh, realize old, um, quite complex tuning systems at the end. So they are, they, you can see that they were um, uh, designed from the perspective of the player and not from the conceptual perspective of the composer. And I think that's it's a, it's a big difference and this is also something why they were um, quite successful because they had in mind how to use them and not, not just in mind what to produce with them. No? And so uh, I started to dream about the possibility to add something to the already existing uh, electronic organ and um, add something that, that is modular and that is somehow also easy transportable and something that can also be applied to any any type of organ, so th that you in, in the ideal uh, in an ideal world, <laughs> you can just uh, use any of these kind of electronic organs that are uh, available and just attach this thing, and then you you can have a, a I don't know 17, 19, it depends on how many keys you want uh, keyboard. And then this opens up this whole repertoire of the 17th century. And as I mentioned, particularly for um, for playing uh, like late Baroque, uh, late 17th century Austrian Baroque music, I think it's it's fantastic because they have all these uh, strange keys, and uh, they can then be played with in mean tone temperament. And 
the, before I <coughs> continue, or not before I pass <laughs> over to uh, Alisa, the biggest advantage of this uh, instrument compared to something like uh, uh, the, a rebuilt archi organo is that you, of course, have all the sound possibilities of an organ. So if you have the archi organo, you have only, I mean, there are so many pipes in there that you basically have one type of sound, like a, a wood, uh, open wood pipe, and this extremely limits the, the, the things that you can do with the instrument. I mean, you can't play any meaningful, any toccatas or anything like this, because the sound doesn't fit the, 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 the type of um, uh, pieces that you want to play. Also, you can't adapt to, you have just one volume and one, one quality, and actually one of the fantastic options of an organ is that you have so many options, so many dynamic and uh, options also in terms of timbre. And this is exactly what, what we can achieve with this extension. You know? We can make the full organ sound uh, available to, to every organist, basically. You know? So maybe... So I'll continue because... Um, uh, so, sorry, I, I, just, okay. I just want to say this because it's important. I mean, all the pieces that I played, I mean, the, these old pieces, they, they were actually composed for this particular type of organ. I didn't make any arrangement or anything like that, but this is the original pieces that are played now in, a, in the way they were meant to be played. It's not like something I added on top of them, but that's actually how they are. <coughs> sorry. <laughs> Um, so when, when Klaus told us about this idea, we realized that what we would end up having to build is, of course, an electronic type of controller or something that uses some sort of technology mechanism to interface with a MIDI organ and basically retrieve the information and then somehow use that information to alter the tuning. And um, of course, one of the questions is why not just use existing electronic controllers because there are plenty of these. Um, there are a lot of different like custom uh, MIDI builds or custom electronic rebuilds of archicembalos that are really quite versatile. Of course, this like these types of organs, you can also change the tuning. You can't quite get the same like you can't get the same amount of split keys. Um, but there's some, for example, like um, like I think Jörg Vogel builds a lot of different like models of split key uh, MIDI keyboards, but. Uh, uh, once again, this is the same situation that uh, these are custom-made instruments and um, the performance practice won't necessarily relate because they're all quite um, different um, and that you have to basically pay a lot of money in order to get this one instrument that can do this thing. So, of course, for this purpose, they're very useful, but for the purpose of being able to take you know, something you already have and then expand it so that you can play more uh, fine-tuning of the... Uh, intervals, you need something like this. Um, of course, there is a situation in which you can maybe more fine tune, and that is things like the Rolly Rise, where you can move your finger up and down and it will adjust the intonation, kind of like how a, um, like a theremin, uh, so, so it's on a very continuous control, but uh, again, this is a, it's an entirely new performance practice, and such controllers or are, are keyboards are really expensive, and um, you can't, for example, get a rolly rise, and then eat, I mean, you have to learn the, this technique with this situation. You have your organ that is not microtonal, and then you add this extension to it to be able to add these um, enharmonic keys. And that is another thing that was a major advantage of doing the project this way is that we are creating something that is not designed for a specific purpose, but that this can be um, integrated and to many different models and many different designs, and that eventually anybody that owns like an organ or a MIDI organ could potentially purchase and use one of these things and uh, put it onto their organ, and then it's an easy way for them to be able to interface with like enharmonic situations without having to learn an entirely new performance practice or spend like thousands of dollars on a specialized instrument. Uh, and so I, I also think, yes, the mo one of the most important things is this idea that it can be integrated for mass production and that, um, therefore, you can also establish performance practices on it. We seem to pick like millions of people. Big, like, yes. Mass production, focus. <laughs> um, 
And I would actually now like to turn it over to Pablo, who will go over um, the design. And I mean, I have some pictures, but maybe it's also useful to, if you want to come up and look as he walks, you, walks you through it, um, then you can kind of see basically the design flow of how the, uh, this actually attaches and what we've done and everything. So. Okay. That was yours, please. So, okay, so what we do here is very self made. <laughs> <laughs> we have a stable stick, a very much carbon fiber, of course. Um, the idea is simple, simply hold it, make the stories, uh, use some of your stories possible. <laughs> we use uh, keyboard uh, keys for for generating our 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 input to the to the Raspberry Pi. Hard soldering. The Raspberry Pi is actually holding the samples that are tuned. So this is also sort of well, it just this cable go inside this fretboard, and then we yeah, maybe does everybody know what. A raspberry Pi is. Yeah, yeah it's very discreet. In the in the in the in this university. That's it. That's why. I'm not in every institute. institute. <laughs> <laughs> so well, uh, then we are using for now. Uh, in the future directions, we would like to make more uh, more keys available. But for now, we're quite limited with our use of the Pi. We have all the samples here. Uh, this is a very, I mean, I think it's very specific for the discount because the discount comes to the input. So the first, uh, the first idea was to actually uh, interface uh, with the MIDI input and retune, uh, retune the samples inside the discount. But it is not possible to do it. Uh, it's, it's not, the system is not open for that. You can do retuning, but you cannot make it, uh, for example, in one manual. And in the other manual, completely different. They are completely attached. As, uh, the, the, we were trying to make the, a similar approach to the piano, that way you can retune the instrument itself. So we went into that process, sampling all the pipes, and then uh, retuning them by software, and then we trigger everything on the pipe. We input this uh, to the base count, and fortunately enough, the input also grabs the reader that is used for all the other manuals. And, and well, after calibrating the volume and all stuff, we have, a, I think, a very convincing sound, of, a unified sound of, for the output. Uh, of course, for the presentations, it will be maybe less interesting. <laughs> or minimal. But so far, so far it's working. It's quite big, the junction. How the future is It looks very cool, right? Mm -hmm. so, Spacious of the <laughs> <laughs> We will. I mean, as you see, this is very simple. The, the keys. We will. We're going to improve the keys also to, to have less distance. Now it's, it's it's a little bit hard to play, but so this this is the prototype. So it will look uh, much uh, more polished yeah, and, and yeah. also more practical. Now it's like ergonomical and not really cool, but but, but it works. I mean. Uh, the, so, so this, just to, to let you know that the, the future of this will be more uh, adapted to a real organism. Oh, flexible is your sound level? Well, uh, we have, uh, in this case we have everything attached to manual too, so what, I, we, what we did is to sample all the manual. Um, mm -hmm. We have, uh, the, this can has the possibility of also uh, retuning for, by active, so it's the same process. Mm -hmm. Uh, what we actually have here also with the interfacing is like uh, when you activate uh, or deactivate a pipe, the pipe, uh, the pipe is activated in the library for, mm -hmm. for the specific pipe, so it's, it's, it's always attached to the pipe to the organ, so it's following. Because if you to make it portable, probably on another organ you have completely different sounds. Ah, uh, yeah, in that regard, yeah, this is a very specific solution in this regard for the disk. Uh, but, uh, I mean, everything is, 
of course, if we go to another brand uh, in the future, we will, we will need to make some modifications with the sample libraries, but in the end, everything is controlled by MIDI. So all the transposition on the activation is handled by C6. So it's just wondering. Yeah, I know. But it's, but it's, but it's a good question. It's, it's, it's actually quite possible. But that, yes. also, also, I mean, of course, now we have samples from this organ, but of course it's like standard sounds, like principal, gamma, and of course maybe in another company the sounds would be like tiny, a little bit different, but I don't think that this will make it incompatible. I mean, and some keys will sound slightly different, but usually if you have a chord, one note is part of the chord, it will pretty much uh, disappear into the sound. I don't think it will be audible that it's taken from a different set of, set, set of samples. I mean, then another possibility for this <coughs> could be, uh, in this case, the focus is to use the piece kind of simply as a controller and have all, this, all the sound up from here in, in the case that is very <coughs> Very different the, oh. the sound quality. I mean, especially for the future, if you if you are thinking about fantastic sample libraries like Hauptwerk or so on. So so I mean, you have been developed uh, uh, an extended interface, <laughs> which can be coupled to almost every manual or every every portable or, uh, organ, and and it, the the, the combi combination of the a normal organ and the extended interface should be able to control every sample library. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what are the next steps for, for the dissemination for the next iteration of, of the prototype? Well, uh, we, what we wanted to implement uh, more is to be more flexible with the, in terms of the pipe is, and the retuning. Now we are using uh, uh, fixed uh, samples retune uh, samples uh, and we, wa we, are, we are using the discount setting as, a, as the reference yep. but we would like to implement that, uh, that the pi computes the, uh, the, the, the retuning okay. of, of, the, of, the, of the library so if, if, we, if, if a person wants to have a, a specific retuning it's possible to do it in the next iteration I think the next phase will be clean up the, the cables and uh, do keys that are more fit for, for performance practice. That's, this is uh, now a very, a very fast solution, to, okay. um, easy to test solution for our practice, but it, I think there's many optimized things that we can grab on to actually make a more yeah. instrumental keyboard. So in the end uh, it will be sent uh, wireless to a computer? When you mm -hmm. No, no, I don't think we. I, I, I mean, I don't want to aim for the as for the next iteration a wireless interface. It just more probably just clean up the interface in terms yeah. that it's very easy to install, uh, cover the all the cabling and make it very hard to to disconnect it because right now in, in this situation it's quite hard. Uh, but it, I think it's, it's now the next iteration is very very much making. Very easy installation, the cleanup process of, of the cabin, uh, a more resistant, more resistant uh, assemble of everything. Yeah. I mean, there were there were a lot of like challenges that came up when making this, and so a lot of the, the solutions that we came up were kind of results of this. I mean, especially some of the software solutions. And I don't know, maybe you want to talk a little bit about the software because we haven't really covered anything to do with um, that yet. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe just to discuss a little bit of. The, the software solutions that you came up with to kind of deal with this and how well, it kind of, I guess, altered from our original vision. Well, right? Papa mentioned the original vision already. Originally, we were hoping that we had a similar situation as with the, the piano, where we could uh, intercept the MIDI messages and uh, retune or use pitch bend to internally retune them. Unfortunately, Wiscount, it, it's totally closed the system. There is no chance of getting in there. Uh, we emailed them, we asked them, please, could we, please, pretty please, and uh, no, impossible. Um, so our solution then was to, to sample it. Um, we have the code to actually already uh, uh, do all the retuning on the fly, on the pie. 
um, but it was a little bit too buggy for this demonstration, so we, in the end we chose to uh, manually retune um, the specific samples for, for the keys as you see them today. Um, but definitely um, the code is existing, it is 85% working I would say, just not stable enough that I would be uh, willing to have it run live right now. Um, uh, the, I guess the other thing, as I was sort of designing the different modules that, are, that were needed, like intercepting MIDI messages, uh, interpreting and intercepting SysX messages, um, sending um, uh, audio from the Pi back into the discount, uh, buttons on the GPIOs on the Pi, it's lots of, of things going on, on hardware and software. Um, I was thinking about how we might extend this in the future so that my code can easily be uh, scaled up. For example, it, it's nowhere in the code does it say we need 15 keys. It can be any amount, we just uh, plug in the number we want and those keys just virtually exist uh, inside of the Pi and uh, um, we just add another key key onto the stick, you glue it there, and it should, <laughs> it should theoretically work. So uh, uh, I spent quite a bit of time trying to, to think what will the next iteration be. Uh, so that as little as possible is hard-coded from the get-go, because otherwise we have to start over again with version 2 and version 3, which I really wanted to avoid. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're interested in the actual code, I'm happy to talk about it, but I, I don't think uh, uh, it's necessary right now. Um, I think uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a big overview. Yeah, there's lots of things that talk to each other, <laughs> uh, uh, messages getting intercepted, interpreted, um, uh, samples triggered, retuned. That's sort of the, the, the big life cycle of, of uh, the fresco body squared, yeah. as we call it. Yeah, if yeah, I please. add something also because you asked about the future. I mean, this, the, the system that we've chosen now, I, I, I just said yes. <laughs> 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 uh, um, to, to take the samples and have kind of the samples stored, so to speak, in the, in the computer. <laughs> uh, of course, has also an, an, a nice, uh, or holds a nice opportunity also for the future, because it also means if you have a speaker, then you can even go to a, a mechanical organ uh, and attach this thing to the mechanical organ, and then you play all the, let's say, the, the non-split <laughs> keys on, with the original yeah, organ sound. Yeah. Then you then you have a speaker for the split keys, then even then these sounds will mix and nobody will have any Well, to, I, I think to this will take some time to adjust it for the specific yeah, location okay. and the specific yeah. instrument, but nevertheless, but I mean, it would be a reduced option. effort. Yeah. yeah, of course. But are the keyboards different from different organs? I mean, the size? Yeah, we can, I mean, we can adjust it here. And we, we have to find the. I mean, that, that's something we have yeah, to do. Yeah, but I mean, uh, yeah, the, 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 the Jason Kiss is different. <laughs> yeah. Be interesting. But for for an organ player, for a wonderful organ player, that's not a problem. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, 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 you can play with these keys. So. Yeah, yeah, but the <laughs> should fit in between somehow. <laughs> no, I, I understand the problem that, that like, I mean, especially yeah. historical organs, each instrument is very yeah. different from each other. And it's. So we ha would have to find a solution to, to adjust this. Yes, yes. I mean, um, our, for the next step, I think it is to, to narrow the keys, to not have them as, 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 as high. That is a big problem. Um, and that, that's very doable. I don't think that is uh, very difficult. The thing that's probably going to be more difficult that I would really like is that the keys themselves, they are not fixed. They are actually movable, that you can um, yeah. uh, so then detach then, them yeah. so you can also store them without destroying them yeah. and then just attach them exactly where you need them. Yeah. So that is the, my hope for, I don't know if there will be three or four, but... <laughs> for the different sound quality, I, I'm not so worried because I know from these old historical instruments that if, as soon as you have a, have a note which is not in your 
brain of, I don't know, the image or the image, whatever you have, it sounds different. Mm -hmm. It's like all these natural instruments have very different sounds on each note, especially the further, the, the, the notes which are further away. Therefore, maybe it's not so important. But I would very, be very interested if Hauptwerk would work with. Yeah, if it can, we could surround with count and just use them, retune the Hauptwerk sounds, that would be. Um, Very I, I briefly for looked into that. The, the biggest issue seems to be getting it stably running on the Pi, yeah. because yeah. it is Can quite heavy it? in terms of the the, the, the power computational power needed to run Hauptwerk. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe the next the next newer Pi is then. Yeah. And you think about also the the first man. I mean, we, we just started with this one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, once, once this is running, I think you can attach it to a, also to three manual systems. I mean, you have to ask. It depends how many cables you're willing to and, yeah. and <laughs> we, I mean, right now we did it here because we have the cables only like this. I mean, this is also partially because we're continuing to work on it, and so we didn't want something so fixed mm -hmm. with the cables, but I'm assuming later we would have very nice cables so that it could be placed on yeah. the lower. Actually, for a larger facility, wireless would be great so that you have one rod yeah. for every uh, manual yeah. Yeah. and with a fixed That's battery right. uh, on the other hand wireless means uh, yeah. additional system latency yeah. Yeah. which is not fun so maybe a large hall yeah, I mean, <laughs> okay, yeah. I mean, for organs it's okay you, you mentioned <laughs> latency and it's really great because it, there's, there's no latency yeah as yeah. far as I remember because this is where when you play with software like maybe with hardware yeah. I use it also with MIDI keyboard it's, you always have latency. Yeah. And, and Huge this, latency, yeah. With this system, I think you press the button, uh, have a coffee, then and then the sound starts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> but if you have uh, replaced this wooden thing from carbon, you have a lot of space inside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's kind of the uh, yeah, potential next. So theoretically, <coughs> it would be thinkable to uh, reproduce uh, with that. Uh, uh, even uh, something like this Archie Organo with its uh, 36 I mean, yeah. um, so, so if we, of if we, have, if we have two of them and just add here between the, the C and the yeah. B, B and the F one more, then we have already 19 keys. Yeah. And, and that's what, so you have one 19 key and there and, and, there and so uh, another 12, 17. <laughs> it's 31. It's 31. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. so, would be possible to yeah. simu and simulate the archaeology. Yeah. And what is it? I mean, I, I was talking about this before. That's really the fantastic thing about this modular way of thinking. And like in the archaeology, we are just copying basically this idea. Yeah. That you, so you, don't, yes. you, yeah, you don't have one very complex instrument, but you have like basically in the archaeology, you have six instruments that are stacked on each other. And you can just play the first instrument and the second instrument and so on. And this is basically the, the same idea behind, yeah, behind this. No? And this makes it so as I said, this makes it so accessible for players. Because you don't need to learn a new instrument, you just add a little bit more information to your already existing technique. <coughs> How did you retune the well normal keys? Because they had to be tuned. Uh, uh, the, the normal key, I mean you have just presets here. Like, ah, yeah, okay. So this yeah, is yeah, like mid-tone power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. that's like. So this is. Yeah, this is so. So if you have a major third, yeah. you have a fantastic major uh, seventh. Yeah. So it has all the features of yeah. a mid quad tone into that. And it's, of course, uh, in the, now we, uh, we stick to this quarter comma, but of course you can set it to equal temperament and then have the, the keys uh, uh, like proper quarter tones, I guess, yeah. would be also yeah. possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, so you can choose any other tuning system and then adjust uh, the additional keys and the way you want. Yeah. And so like what uh, they are doing in Basel with the, with the wood slices. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, but it's like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, uh, it's, not not, it's so much nicer to just so yeah. put in a number and to <laughs> yes. and yes, you know, it's, like, uh, it's really a fast. thousand pipes with, yeah. with two little wooden things. Yeah, I wanted to try.
try out with that something. In the end, uh, the time was over and the half of the wooden slides were fixed. Yeah. yeah. No, but, but as I said before, I think it's really fantastic that you have the full organ sound available. Yeah. I mean, I mean, like, I'm an organist, and I mean, I really love organs and organ sound. And with the Archi organ, okay, I mean, it's nice, but it doesn't give you the impression that you're playing an organ. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like one song, no? Yeah. And it doesn't have pedal, pedals, even so. So it's really, I understand why the purpose of it, I think it was also designed basically for training with singers, no? So for, that was one aspect. Yeah, yes. so it was not really meant to be a performance instrument. It, it is sort of like, and you couldn't fill a larger hall with, like, this little like your organ. There are a lot of pieces written for it uh, in the meantime, yeah. Yeah, yeah but, but, I mean, like, like the whole repertoire that I play today, you couldn't play on this instrument. I mean, of course you can, but you don't get the, the sound result that you want for this kind of uh, pieces. No? Yeah, and when you write for it, uh, um, for the, let's say, physical archaeology, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you have uh, to decide, well, I write for one dynamic and one sound, mm -hmm. and a lot of pitches. Yeah. That's, uh, that's uh, exactly the point. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's a great thing to do, but well, the other things, uh, all the other things, uh, as you said, uh, which are designing for an organ, mm -hmm. an organ yeah. that's not possible. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.